Awesome. So again, thank you to Muslim Space and Austin Yoga Tree and all of you uh, making this happen once again for Ramadan and allowing us to come together to do something good for ourselves this evening. Like I said, this can be more of a gentle class. We'll um, take our time using our breath, moving with our breath tonight. A couple things that I'd like us to have um, is just a towel from the bathroom. This can work as a nice little support. We can fold it up a couple times and gives us a little support for the back of the head, the back or our legs. If you have a throw blanket laying around, this is also a nice tool to have nearby. It works in the same manner. And then a pillow or some cushions. So I just grabbed a pillow off my bed. You can grab some um, cushions or pillows off of the sofa. So I thought we'd start in a different position this evening and that's in a seated position. I personally have this meditation cushion I use. It's about three to four inches and it's firm um, and I sit up on. Sitting on the floor can be one of the most challenging parts of our practice. You're always welcome. If you have a chair nearby, you can use a chair to sit in. So no problem there. But I would recommend finding either a folded blanket. Since we did have our blanket, I could fold it a couple more times over again so I have something a little bit more firm to sit on and a little bit of a lift. And that lift will allow us to sit up nice and tall especially if we do have tightness around our hamstrings and our hips. So I'll give us a moment here if we need to go collect some things around um, the house, go ahead and do so. Now when we come into a seated position, there's different options. The more common option is to sit cross-legged Sukhasan pose. I am sitting up on my cushion here. I wanna be able to have my pelvis in a nice neutral position. If we catch ourselves rounding our spine and our knees are pulled up towards our body, that's usually due to tight muscles in the backs of the legs and around the hips. So we can choose to elevate ourselves a little bit higher as long as we're comfortable. And for this evening's practice, I also wanted to start with a pranayama exercise. So pranayama are breathing exercises um, that we use for a variety of reasons. The one I wanna share with you tonight, I personally think is one of the most powerful and beneficial. Um, within just a couple minutes, it has ability to reduce anxiety levels. It clears the mind of distractions and clutter. It also helps clear the airways and the nasal passages. So if we are suffering from allergies, this is a nice pranayama exercise to practice. Um, Nadi Shodhanam is energy cleansing. So just energetically in our body, this pranayama, pranayama can help bring things back into balance. First thing we we'll wanna do is to find our seat and sit up as tall as possible. And then with the hands, we take what is called chin mudra, bringing the index finger to thumb and the other three fingers are extended. And this means the seal of wisdom or knowledge. And we always have an opportunity to um, learn more about ourselves and our practice. So we'll take those hands and we'll place them on our knees with the palms up. And let's close our eyes here for a moment before we begin, just so we can allow ourselves to feel a little bit more centered. We'll take a moment to reconnect to our physical body if you need to make adjustments in your seat, please do so. And then we'll try to cultivate some stillness here this evening. Allowing the mind to settle back into the body. Let's go ahead and scan our body, starting at the crown of the head, and moving all the way down through the limbs into the fingertips and toes. As we're taking some inventory of the body, we are consciously letting go of any tension, stress we might be holding on to. So let go of any expression across the face. Poof the cheeks up with air, yawn, stick out the tongue, whatever we need to do to help release the jaw.
Feel the weight of the shoulders and the elbows dropping away from the ears. The gentle weight of the hands on the knees. Notice the contact points with the lower half of our body with the props and the ground below. And allow the lower half of the body to feel grounded towards the earth. Simultaneously, we will lift and lengthen through the upper half of the body, especially along the back of the body, vertebra by vertebra. Stretching our spine up towards the sky through the crown of the head. And so we're taking a moment with our body. If we notice areas that we might be healing that need a little extra TLC this evening, Let's pause on those areas. Take a healing breath into those areas. And on the exhale, allow those areas to also relax. Remembering we practice with love and kindness towards ourselves and our bodies. And now let's spread our awareness to the rhythm of our breath. Simply observe and watch the body breathe. Ideally, we're breathing as smoothly and evenly as possible in and out through the nose. You might notice the airflow around the nostrils, the tip of the nose. Let's also feel the breath within the body. As we inhale, the body naturally expands. We might feel the abdomen expand slightly, a little bit of space in between the ribs, a little rise in the chest. And on our exhales, the body naturally contracts. So we might feel the rib cage come a little closer together the abdomen might draw back in towards the body. Our breath is our guide and it is a bridge between the mind and the body. And it's so important to take time during our day to simply be and breathe and to take some nice deep breaths. If at any time you feel like you need to readjust the legs or readjust your seated position, please do so. I know this can be challenging. We'll just be seated here for a little bit longer. So at this point, if you want to flutter your eyes open softly so you have a visual, you can do so. Or you can keep your eyes closed and just listen to the verbal cues as we move into Nadi Shodhanam, our alternate nostril breathing. So in your right hand, we make the peace symbol to begin with. Then we glue the index finger to the middle finger. Our thumb ring and pinky fingers are going to be our pinchers. Turn the right hand towards the face and place the middle and index finger right into that eyebrow center. Rest the thumb gently on the outside of the right nostril and the ring and pinky on the outside of the left nostril. To begin, we will inhale through both nostrils. And then exhale back out through both nostrils. Now close the right nostril with the thumb and inhale just through the left. Close the left nostril, open the right and exhale. Inhale back through the right nostril. Close the right, open the left and exhale. That's one round. Inhale back through the left nostril. Close the left, open the right and exhale. Inhale back through the right. 
close right, open left, exhale. That's two rounds. Inhale, left. Close left, open right, exhale. Inhale, back through the right. Close right, open left, exhale. That's three rounds. Continue with your body and the rhythm of your breath. So you will continue to move from side to side. If you notice that one side is a little bit more stuffed up than the other, that's totally normal. Just do your best to breathe through that side. If the right arm or head become tired, take the left hand and place it under the right elbow to help prop up the arm, the head, and to maintain our posture. And we'll do our best to keep our inhales and exhales as even and equal as possible. Whatever round we're on, we'll take the time to finish that round. And that round should finish when we get to our next exhale out the left nostril. So whenever you get to that point and you're exhaling out the left nostril, exhale completely. And then release the hands back down to the knees. Be mindful of the posture of the spine. Allow the breath to wander away wherever it wants to go. Try to focus the mind's eye at the eyebrow center, the place that we just created a little acupressure point at between the brow. And simply just take another moment here to observe maybe any small shift we might have noticed in our breathing and our emotional or mental state. And then on the next, inhale through the nose. Very softly, let's start to flutter our eyelids back open. We'll start to gently bring our awareness back to our surroundings. So for the legs, we have been seated for a while. We're gonna give our legs a break and a stretch. I want you to remember which foot is in front because we are gonna come back to a seated position for just a couple opening poses. So you can rock back a little bit, give those legs a stretch, stretch out in front of the body. You can prance them, straighten one leg at a time. The fingertips can come down beside the hips to help support the back. You can point and flex the feet a couple of times, wiggle the toes. It's even quite nice to take open palms or fists and to literally smack or gently punch into the legs. This helps improve our circulation, bringing the blood flow back down into our limbs. So let's come back to a seated position. We'll do some gentle movements to help release tension in the neck, shoulders, and back. Coming back into a cross-legged position, try to place the opposite foot in front. Now you can always add additional support for the knees. If you have your blankets and your towels, just tucking them underneath there can um, help those legs a little bit more in our seated posture. Draw on through that low belly, prop the spine up nice and tall. Let's stretch our arms out the side of the body here. 
turning our palms up to the ceiling. Another nice deep breath in through the nose. Let's reach those arms all the way up to the ceiling. Turning the palms back out, exhale, float the fingertips back down to the floor. We'll add a gentle neck stretch, inhaling those arms up. Let's take our gaze upwards, float the chin up. Keep the back of the neck extended, so we're not just dropping the weight of the head backwards. Exhale, fingertips to the floor. Without rounding the back, draw the chin down to the chest. Feel like you're lifting the chest up into the chin. One more time. Inhale, eyes gaze upward, chin floats, big stretch. And exhale, fingertips to the ground, chin draws into the chest, stretching the root of the neck. Inhale, re-extend those arms up to the ceiling. We'll go right into a spinal flow or twist. On this exhale, let's twist to our right. Now the fingertips will float back down. We may be able to find the opposite knee in front of us, fingertips just gracing the ground behind us. Continue to breathe and rotate around the axis of the spine here, all the way up the spine through the neck. Open those eyes as wide as we can, peeking behind the body. Our next inhale will bring everything back up to center. So unwind, reach up, maintain this length. Exhale, nice big twist to our left. You may find the opposite knee, maybe the fingertips graze the ground. Continue that twist up the neck, open the eyes nice and wide. Inhale, pulls us back up to center. And exhale, one more time to the right. Keeping our shoulders and chin parallel to the ground as we bring everything out. And inhale, bring it back up. And one more time to the left. So twists are really beneficial for our digestion as well. They help compress our internal organs. Inhale up, bring those palms to touch. Exhale to our heart center. So we're gonna make a bigger transition now to tabletop. Let's go ahead and float those knees up, give our legs another stretch, another little wiggle, get the blood flowing down back into our feet. So we'll rearrange ourselves on our ground, you don't need to be on a yoga mat. If you don't have a yoga mat, you're practicing on carpeting, that's fine. You could have a blanket underneath you. You might even wanna add a blanket here in a moment to give our knees some extra cushion. So we'll flip our bodies around and this is called tabletop pose. So we're basically turning our body into a tabletop position. We'll spread our fingers nice and wide and we'll open our hands up as broad as our shoulders, stacking those joints. And we'll press into the ground so we can feel some of that support from the muscles of the arms. And then we're gonna drop our knees right below our hips and have some space between your knees and your feet. So arms are the front legs, thigh bones, the back legs of the table, and our back is the tabletop. And we're trying to keep that as level as possible. The toes can be tucked under here, stretching the feet or flatten out the tops of the feet. Let's give our right leg a nice big stretch from our seated position. So simply stretch that right foot back from the hip. The ball of the foot will be to the floor. We may shift our weight backwards as if we're trying to press that heel to the ground to intensify that stretch. And we really feel the eye of the knee opening up back. Take a nice deep breath in. On the exhale, bring that right knee down. Hips stay nice and level. Give that left leg a nice big stretch behind us. Now, if your knees needed some extra cushion here, here's where that folded blanket, you can always tuck that blanket underneath the knees and the shins so that the knees have a little bit of softness underneath them. Take a deep breath in, giving that left leg a big stretch. Exhale, bring the left knee down. Now, as we're starting to build up strength in our forearms and our wrists, sometimes our wrists need to take a break. So we can rise up onto our fingertips. It's called hasta banda. You wanna round through the knuckles of the fingertips, pretend like you're holding a tennis ball. So that's one way to help decompress the wrists. Or you can make a strong punching fist 
and you take your knuckles into the ground so that the wrist is straight instead of into that extension. So choose your pleasure. Now we're gonna go through some extension and flexion for our spine. Take another nice breath in through the nose, relax the belly. Feel like you're trying to lift your tailbone up and we're stretching the spine forward and up through the crown of the head, taking our gaze or our drishti forward. As you exhale, draw the belly in, scoop the tailbone under, round the back up to the ceiling, drawing the chin towards the chest, and we take our gaze to our belly button. We follow the breath, inhaling, relaxing the belly, gentle back bend, lengthening up through the crown of the head. Exhale, scooping, rounding, tucking the tailbone. We'll feel this nice big stretch between our shoulder blades. Try to get the hips kind of moving in and out of these poses here. And let's take a couple more rounds. So some of us might need a little bit more back bending in our lives, especially if we're sitting in front of the computer all day. If we tend to hold some tension in our back, that rounding will help stretch out the muscles. Whatever feels good. We're just taking a moment here to loosen things up. We'll meet back in a neutral position. We're gonna give our wrists a break and do another stretch here for our low back and our hips. This pose is called Velasana or child's pose. We'll try to take the wide knee version. So flatten out the feet and bring the big toes to touch. Open our knees as wide as our hips. Now my knee people, if it's not easy or available for us to sit our sit bones onto our heels, take your pillow or your blankets behind you into the crease of those knees so that when we sit back, there's not as much pressure on the knees. Once we're in this position, we'll try to walk our fingertips even more forward to those front corners of the mat, if we're on a mat, or just stretch them out to the front of the body. And then we'll relax the belly and the heart and the head to the ground. Couple things here, we do want our head to be supported. So if you get into this position and the forehead is not able to touch the ground, that's normal. In the mornings, I'm six inches away from the ground with my forehead. It takes me all day to get those muscles to warm up. So we may simply stack our um, hands under our forehead, our forearms, slide a folded towel under your forehead, but support your head in some way. If the head is touching the ground, great. Continue to melt the heart and the belly. So this pose is a nice stretch across the lumbar area of our low back around our hip creases. If those fingertips are extended, we'll also feel a nice stretch here through the side bodies and around the shoulder. This pose is also very grounding, so it helps our mind to calm down, helps transition us from our daily activities into the evening. It is beneficial for insomnia and anxiety as well. And those of us that may be experiencing headaches at any time, this can be a nice soothing posture to take. So let's try to take one more breath here. And then the next inhale, we'll float the head up and we are gonna bring the body back up into this tabletop position. The next pose, Adho Mukha Svanasana or Downward Facing Dog is an inversion and it is gonna build up some upper body strength. So if you get into down dog tonight, it's not for you, come back to this pose. You can always sink back to a child's pose and take a resting pose as needed. Fingers are nice and wide. We'll walk our hands about one hand's distance forward. Tuck those toes under. Now strongly draw those abdominal muscles into the body. Press into the ground and we'll start to float our knees and our hips up to the ceiling. And then as we exhale, we try to shift our weight down the back of the body and the backs of the legs. Now, a couple of things about this pose. It's okay if your heels are not touching the ground. We're still getting a nice big stretch of the backs of the legs. If we feel a lot of pulling in our low back, bend the knees more deeply to help release the spine. Take breaks as needed. 
Again, this is an inversion, so we do need to be mindful of blood pressure conditions or heart conditions, but it can be very beneficial to get that blood flow towards the head. Try to draw those shoulder blades away from the ears so that our neck is long and loose. Continue to draw the belly in and drawing the belly towards the thighs. Now let's take our dog for a walk. Those of us in downward facing dog. So on the inhale, float both heels up as high as we can, stretching out those toes. On the exhale, sink the right heel down as you bend the left knee. We should feel a big stretch up the back of that leg. Inhale, heels up. Exhale, switch. Left heel down, bend the right knee. Now we can continue to pedal those heels as slowly or quickly as we want. And then we'll try to take one more breath in this pose, just sinking both heels towards the ground, finding some stillness here. Another pose that can be preventative medicine for headaches. Just be mindful of any unnecessary pressure. The next inhale, look forward and we'll baby step our feet towards our hands and our hands towards our feet. Now I'm gonna go through some modifications here because this is a pretty intense pose for a lot of us and it's still an inversion. So if you'd like to modify, bend your knees deeply and rest your elbows on your thigh bones. That way your upper body is more supported by your lower body. We could even come up onto our hands and just be kind of in a seated squat position. If you are comfortable staying upside down in Uttanasana or forward fold, you can try to fold the body in half. The fingertips do not need to touch the ground. You can even take your hands to opposite elbows and just ragdoll the upper body. So here it's okay to let the arms dangle and let the head loosely hang from the shoulders, but do keep your legs active. So pressing the feet into the floor, do continue to pull into those lower abdominals to protect the back. One more breath. Now we'll slowly come up to standing, especially if you are practicing fasting, our low, um, our blood pressure drops. So I want us to come up slowly and with the breath. We will all bend our knees, placing our hands on our thigh bones with the fingertips turned inward. Draw the chin back towards the chest. And on the inhale, use your strong legs and core to re-stack the spine one vertebra at a time. Make sure you're inhaling. Slowly coming all the way up to standing. The head should be the very last thing that comes up. When the head floats up, you can roll your shoulders up and then exhale, let the arms float beside the body. If you are seeing stars or get really lightheaded, please just sit down for a moment Sit in an upright position until your blood pressure comes back to you. So we'll start here. This is called mountain pose or Tadasan. It's our foundational pose for all of our standing postures. It's a wonderful pose to help produce balance and our body and improve our posture. Our feet are our foundation. So let's try to run those feet parallel to each other. We want to use the strength of our legs. So if you're a knee jammer like I am, I like to just lock my knees out backwards. I want to bring my shin bones slightly forward. I want to feel some strength up the front of my thighs. I'm going to pull the front body towards the back body and lengthen the back body back down towards the ground. Tonight, let's turn our palms forward and spread the fingers nice and wide. Feel a slight engagement between the shoulder blades. Just a Gentle little squeeze back there to get into this heart opening and let the head just float on the shoulders. So no tension in the face or around the neck. We'll work with a little bit of balancing this evening. Balancing poses are fun and lighthearted and they're also really beneficial for our brain. On our inhale, reach the arms up nice and wide and reach all the way up to the ceiling. Big stretch. Bring those palms to touch and exhale to your center. Here comes the balancing. We rely heavily on our eyes. So in yoga, we call it a drishti or a focal point. You'll wanna to try to focus your eyes on one spot and try to keep them there. 
Inhale, release the hands down, out and up. We're drawing a big circle in our fingertips. This time we're gonna rise up under our tippy toes, heels up. Exhale, palms touch. The challenge is to slowly come down, heels to the ground, hands to the heart. Let's do two more tonight. This is called palm tree pose. Inhale, we're like a tree growing up towards the sky, big stretch. Exhale, try to slowly come down. And one more. We'll meet on the exhale with our feet grounded and our hands back to our heart. Now let's open our feet a little wider than our hips tonight. This will be a single leg balance, another um, posture that's really beneficial for our brain. Let's shift our weight over into our right leg. Now our right side is gonna get really strong. It's gonna push in towards the ground. We're gonna do a different version today. This is gonna be crane pose. I think last week we did star pose. But we'll start off the same way. So right leg pushing into the floor, nice and strong around my waist. This left leg should start to feel a little light. So you can play with lifting and lowering the toes. And then let's hover our arms out. See if we can't hover that foot from the floor. If we're dancing around tonight, we come out of the pose, it's no big deal. So crane pose does add some movement, so it's a little bit more challenging. Do your best. On the inhale, bend the left knee up. Now this foot is really relaxed. It's just hanging down there. And be really soft in the hands. These are like the wings of the bird rising up. Soft bend at the elbows. On the exhale, we're gonna float our wings back down and the foot back down. Now you may touch the ground or keep it in a hover. Inhale, floating the knee up. The feet, foot and the hands are relaxed, arms float up. Exhale, hover or touch. One more round. Our next exhale, we'll all land back down to the ground. So we'll bring the left foot back down. The arms will come back down, floating beside the body. We'll bring our weight back into both feet and pause for a moment in Tadasana or Mountain Pose. Just observe the body and the breath. Try to keep the eyes focused on our one spot. Turn the palms out. Inhale, reach out and up. Big stretch. Palms touch. Exhale, hands to heart. Shifting our weight now over into the left leg. This side grows nice and strong. The tree trunk growing down into the earth. Push the foot to the floor. This side should now start feeling a little lighter. Lift and lower the toes. We'll try to float here, hovering the foot, letting the arms float beside us. And then three times following the breath in crane pose. Our next inhale bends the right knee up. The foot is just dangling. The hands are completely relaxed. A little bend at the elbow and the wrist like the wings of a bird. And on the exhale, we try to slowly come down into a hover or a touch. Inhale. Float the wings out and up. Pull the knee up. Exhale. One more round. Next exhale, we'll land back down to the ground as gracefully as possible. Even out the weight between both feet. Let the arms float beside the body. Turn the palms forward, spread the fingertips. Try to lift the toes up and spread the toes. The front of the body's opening, nice long, Line up the back of the body. No tension in the face or the neck. You can softly bring those toes back down. One more time. Inhale, out and up, big stretch. 
Bring the palms to touch, exhale, hands to heart. So if we moved around for our balancing poses tonight, let's all meet back towards the top of our yoga mat in Tadasana. So we'll stand with our feet about hips width apart, parallel to each other. We'll float those arms back out beside the body. We'll stand nice and tall through the crown of the head, floating our ears over our shoulders and our shoulders over our hips. Coming back to the breath again, inhale out and up. We can take our drishti upwards for a very gentle back bend. On this next exhale, micro bend the knees, hinge from the hips, swan dive the arms back, around, and down, transitioning back to Uttanasana or forward fold. Feel free to stop halfway with hands on thighs, knees bent or giving the back of the body another big stretch, releasing and dangling the arms and the head towards the ground. Stay connected to the core to protect the back. Bringing the hands to the shins or higher, inhale, squeeze the muscles of the upper back to lift the chest into a halfway lift. This exhale, we bend our knees. Now take your time. You can get there however you need to. For, try to plant the hands and take a big step back, one foot at a time, ending back into downward facing dog. Remember, you can immediately come to your knees and be in tabletop instead, or sit back to a child's pose, your choice. Those of us choosing to stay upside down for just another moment longer, Sink those heels towards the earth. Draw the belly in, shifting the belly towards the thighs. Let the head be loose between those upper arm bones. Next inhale, we'll float our heels up as high as they can go. This exhale, we'll all drop down to our knees. Try to keep the knees together this time for child's pose if it's an option. Flatten out the tops of the feet. Sinking those sit bones back to the heels and sliding our hands all the way back to our feet. The palms turn up to the ceiling and we drop the weight of our arms and the head back down to the ground. So this is a really nice way to release tension around the neck and shoulders and give that back a big stretch. One more breath. Hands under shoulders, tuck the chin. Inhaling, we're gonna again round through the spine. So we're articulating up the spine, stacking the spine, trying to sit back on the heels. You can always transition through tabletop if that's better for your body. Shift over to either hip, it doesn't matter. And we'll bring our feet forward. All right, y'all, it is time to come onto our back. We'll do a few more postures in a supine position that will be beneficial for our digestive system, um, nice calming poses as well to move into our evening. If you might want some props in a bit when we get to final relaxation, now is a good time to just kind of get things close by you so you don't have to hunt them down later. Safest way to come onto our back is again to just kind of rock over to one hip and use the hands to lower the body down, extend an arm forward, and then we roll on over to our back. And we'll all need to take a moment here to shift around, loosen up our clothing. If you happen to have a ponytail, we need to move it out of the way so we can find the back center of our skull. Draw those shoulder blades under. Now pull the belly in and let's draw our knees in towards the body. Resting the hands on the shin bones or even behind the knees if that's more comfortable. Just do a little rock here side to side, giving our low back a little massage. Coming to a neutral position, keep the knees together and the feet parallel to each other. Spinal twist, extend the arms out from the shoulders like airplane wings. On the exhale, lower the knees over to the right. The left hip will come up off the ground. If that bottom thigh does not touch the ground, slide your pillow or a blanket underneath it to support it. 
Gravity is our friend here. It's gonna help traction out the muscles of the body. Sink the shoulders into the ground. Again, to give our neck and shoulders a little bit more, turn the head to the left to give it a counter twist. You can start slowing the breathing down even more. Relax the face. the jaw, relax the throat, the shoulders. Next inhale, bring the head and the knees back up through center. If you feel like you need to drop the feet to the floor and do a little adjustment in the low back before we do the other side, feel free to do so. Then draw the knees back up, keep the feet parallel to each other. Exhale, knees to the left. Again, if they don't easily touch, you can put a little prop underneath them to give them some support. Release the weight of the body to the ground and let gravity to help. Traction the whole body out. Shoulders sink into the ground, especially the right shoulder. We can give our neck a counter twist by turning the head to the right, taking a couple of deep breaths here. Inhale, bring the head and the knees back up, one knee at a time. Rock out the back, come back into alignment. So the next pose is Pavana Mukhtasana. This is another pose that can help um, stimulate our digestive system. So if we're fasting, we know that slows down, it can get a little sluggish. So doing these twists and these purposeful compressions can help maintain a little bit of movement in the area of our body. Drop the feet to the floor and then bend the right knee back up, placing the hands, interweave the fingers on that right shin bone, and then slide your left heel forward so the left leg will be flat to the ground. Take a breath in through the nose, try to inflate the abdomen like a balloon. And on the exhale, very gently, we're gonna draw our right knee towards our right armpit. Inhale, back off a little bit, let the belly inflate. Exhale, encourage the right knee towards the right armpit. So we're not pulling it directly into our chest. It's not falling outside the hip. We're just trying to compress that right abdominal wall. Elbows in, shoulders down, let the hands do the work. One more time, inhaling. And exhale, draw that knee in, squeeze that right side or ascending colon. Then release your grip, drop the foot to the floor. Inhale, slide the right leg out to meet the left. Reach the arms overhead, so now we're letting that blood rush back out. Exhale, float those arms down, walk the feet in. Draw the left knee in and weave the fingers on the shin bone. Slide that right heel forward. The right leg stays anchored to the ground. Inhaling through the nose, try to relax the belly, let it expand like a balloon. On the exhale, drawing the left knee towards the left armpit. Inhale, back off a little bit, belly expands. Again, we're trying to purposely compress that left abdominal wall. Exhale, use the hands, shoulders and elbows down and in. We'll feel a little compression and pinching across the front of the hip, that's normal. One more time. Exhale, draw it in. Release the grip, drop the foot to the floor. Inhale, slide the left leg down and out. Arms overhead, big stretch. Exhale, arms down, step the feet in. One more time, 
Draw the knees into the body here. Take the hands behind the thigh bones. And let's try to stretch both legs straight up to the ceiling, supporting the legs with our hands. Point and flex the feet a couple times. Waterfall pose, legs up the wall pose, another really beneficial pose for our circulation, for our nervous system. Helps benefit and aid a peaceful sleep. And then we'll go right into a happy baby pose. So hold the outer thighs. Let's open the legs up into a nice big V to start. So we'll get a big stretch for our inner thigh growing muscles here. And then bend the knees back towards those armpits. This time flex the feet and reach up and try to take a hold of the inside of the feet or the toes. The knees can be out wider than the arm bones. Relax the low back into the ground. Add a little rock here side to side. Happy baby pose, a big hip opener. Bring the soles of the feet towards each other. Take the hands and see if we can wrap our hands around our feet or our ankles. Let the knees open nice and wide, Baddha Konasana. Another nice stretch for our hips. And then hands to the outside of the knees, draw the knees together. See if we can wrap our arms across our shin bones, taking hold of opposite elbows, forearms or wrists. Float the nose up to the knees to give the root of the neck another stretch. And this is a wonderful opportunity to give our bodies a hug and to tell ourselves and our bodies how much we love and appreciate them, how grateful we are for them. Take a deep breath in. And on our exhale, we're gonna allow the body to flop and melt to the ground. If you have those pillows and blankets nearby, this would be a nice time to support the legs by taking a pillow underneath the thigh bones or the knees. If the head needs a little extra support, we can take our towels or blankets behind the head. We just want our body to be as comfortable as possible. We can adjust our shoulder blades slightly down. Those arm bones roll open beside the body, palms up. We allow the fingertips to curl up naturally. You can open the legs even wider than the hips and allow the feet to flop open. Give the head a little rock here side to side finding the very back center of our skull. Poof those cheeks with air, stick out the tongue, yawn. Releasing that lower jaw, any tension around the jaw. So I'll guide us through a little bit more relaxation. We'll give ourselves a moment of some peace and quiet. I'll use my singing bowl when it's time to come up out of final relaxation, and then we'll finish our practice together tonight. Make any adjustments you need to in the beginning so that we can find stillness in the end. Allow the whole weight of the body to sink into the earth. We plug everything else in, in our lives to recharge and restore their batteries. And this is an opportunity for us to plug ourselves in to whatever it is that restores our energy, that brings us peace, and that fills up our cups. So imagine yourself plugging into that source, restoring your battery. All the muscles relax. Loosen up all the joints in the body.
Relax the belly completely, all of the abdominal muscles and internal organs. Notice a subtle rise and fall of the belly with the breath. Feel the weight of the limbs. Let the shoulders be heavy, relaxing all the way down through the elbows and to the wrists, the hands and the fingertips. Feel the weight of the legs as we relax from the hips through the knees into the ankles, the feet, and the toes. Let go of any expression on the face with the lips softly touching, release the tongue and lower jaw to gravity. Notice a quiet and gentle breath around the tip of the nose and the nostrils. And if the mind wanders or becomes distracted, gently bring it back to the rhythm of the breath. Giving ourselves just one more moment of today to let go, to feel a sense of surrender, and to simply be and breathe. So we'll slowly come back to the natural rhythm of the breath. And we'll begin to breathe some life back into the body, waking up the toes, the fingertips, give the head a rock side to side, roll the wrists and the ankles, Let's take another breath in, reaching the arms overhead, long body stretch, straighten out the legs on the middle of the mat, point flex the feet a couple times, 
Give your right side a little bit bigger of a stretch. Give that left side a little bigger of a stretch. Bring the body back to center. Spread the fingers, flex the feet, toes to shins and spread the toes. And create as much space in the body as we can. Big breath in. And then our exhale, let's float our arms back down beside the body, walk the feet in. Draw those knees back in and gently rock side to side across that low back. Right arm falls beside the head. We roll all the way onto that right side in our fetal position. The head can cradle on that bottom arm. Top hand falls to the floor in front of the heart. Supta Velasana, sleeping baby pose. This is also a nice moment to create a positive affirmation, intention, or mantra to take with us into our evenings tonight. And then keeping those eyes soft or closed, we'll press them to the ground, using our hands to help the body come back up. We will revisit any comfortable seated position and take just a couple more breaths together to finish our practice. So we wanna find those sit bones, sitting up nice and tall through the whole length of the spine to the crown of the head. Being mindful of our surroundings, reach those arms out beside the body. Turning the palms up to the ceiling, inhale, breathing, let's float those arms up and let's gather up everything we need for the rest of our evening. Turn the palms out, big exhale out, float the fingertips all the way back down to the ground and let go of all that other junk we don't need this evening. And one more time, inhale, arms up, bringing the palms to touch, Exhaling hands to heart, humbly bowing our head down to our heart to honor and thank ourselves, our bodies, each other, and remembering to be grateful to anyone else that made it possible for us to come together to reconnect and do something good for ourselves this evening. Feel free to join me in the Om Shanti Mantra. It means peace, Peace, peace. Or just sit with your breath for another moment. Taking a deep breath in to begin. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. And I thank you all so much for taking time out of your day to hopefully restore those batteries and refill our cups and reconnect to um, those sources in our lives that we have. So I appreciate all of you being here. If you do have questions or comments for me, feel free to ask or pass those along. And Thank you so much, Joanne. Thank you to you and Austin Yoga Tree for such a beautiful practice. Um, I definitely feel restored, mind, body, and spirit. Just even the breaths alone, um, just taking time to breathe, that is so restorative in and of itself. And then for me, especially today, the spinal twist, man, that just, that was so beautiful for my body. So thank you so much. Oh, good. I know it's a lot of the things that we do in our practice aren't daily movements that we take in our day, but we should do because they are so beneficial for our body. So I'm so happy to hear that. Just taking time to breathe. <laughs> it's a powerful thing. So. Well, thank, thank you very you. much. I, I, I got a lot out of it too. I have some um, digestive issues. And so I'm always just looking for ways to kind of, you know, restore my gut and stretch stuff out. And when you said it was good for digestion, I was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yes. For, oh, good. So twisting yeah. definitely um, help us to massage those internal organs, ascending, descending, transverse colon. That last um, couple uh, movements we did at the end, wind relieving pose, Pavana Muktasana, that's we were on our back, 
you can't see me, but we were pulling um, a knee in towards our yep. That one's yep. really beneficial for that as well. It's called wind That's relieving pose for a reason. So it helps, you know, get the gases out of there. If we feel bloated, we have some digestive stuff going on. And especially those of you that might be partaking in the fasting, our digestion really slows down and gets sluggish. Um, there's one wonderful benefits to fast for our digestion as well, obviously, but that's one thing to be mindful of. Um, and just gentle inversions. So elevating your legs, helping to improve that circulation and getting that blood flow into those internal organs can be really beneficial as well. So is your, you know, I actually live pretty close to the studio. I'm not too far from Anderson Mill Road. So are you guys, are you open now for yeah, uh, drink? Yeah, oh, wonderful. So we are. Um, Jonathan, uh, one of the owners, he's been teaching in-person classes. And I do believe that we are going to try to open sometime in June to July. It's on the agenda. I don't know that there's anything written in stone yet. Um, but once, you know, more people are getting vaccinated and more comfortable coming back into the studio, I plan on, you know, moving that direction as well. I also teach two classes during the week through Austin Yoga Tree. I teach a Wednesday evening class, 5.30, or sorry, that's us, 6 to 7.15. I keep it on the gentle, restorative side, but we still move and loosen things up. And I also teach a class Sunday mornings, 9.30 to 10.45. That one, I try to bring a little bit more movement into our practice to kind of wake us up from our sleep and loosen things up and prepare us for our day. But I always give lots of modifications and I try to accommodate everybody. Okay, that's great. Yeah, I, um, my kids go to you know the medical center there, the ARC. So I